Hello everyone and welcome back to Suzerain and I'm so happy to have this back on the channel. I really enjoyed the original campaign when we played it and the new DLC has just dropped as of 20 minutes ago, give or take. Um, my voice is still pretty boar so I apologise, I'm still a little bit under the weather and this is a game that's heavy on reading so I'm going to do my best but if I cough, if I splutter, I apologise, I may not be able to deal with all the um, talking and I will edit out as best I can but I may not be able to catch every single cough. Now, last time we played we ended up in Nuku Apocalypse so let's try not to do that this time so we'll go for Rizia and we're not going to play as the Republic of Swordland but it's interesting to see the differences so Swordland was a Republican presidential republic had 37 million economy in recession but it was still a major power it started in 1954 with the kings of Rizia if I can actually click the right thing. Uh, it's different. The government is semi-constitutional monarchy. It's got 40, fili 40, billion, 40 million population, even. Uh, it does have a state religion. Key exports are gas, gold and wine. Starting in 1950, so four years before the main campaign. King Romus Taurus is ascended to the throne. His reign begins under geopolitical strife, contention between royal houses. So I think the best thing we can do is just start. See what happens. You haven't finished the main story. Starting DLC, War 20 Gen 2, that's fine. I finished the main story, and then uninstalled the game. That's probably why that's the case. Um, I do want to continue, yes. So, how are we going to play this? Are we going to play this as kind of a dictatorship? Are we going to play this as a, as a benevolent, benevolent monarch, even? I don't know. I also don't know how long the story is in comparison to the main game. But I didn't want to spoil anything for myself. I wanted to leave it kind of completely open so all my decisions are political and kind of personal are made fresh there and then regardless of whether they are good or bad. Monarch, your reign and your abode, your scepter and the orb you hold, and air and the ground on which you trod all will be dust when you are cold. You open your eyes to this realm. Becoming a king was never your choice. Uh, let's say it was our calling. Birthright sounds a bit obnoxious and better and doesn't really sound like we want the job. From a young age, you knew you were no ordinary child. You were Romus Taurus, grandson of Queen Eliza, ruler of all of Rizia, the son of Crown Prince Valero, the Duke of Valenquiris. For most of the year, you lived with your father Valero and your mother Estella in a lavish palace atop the cliffs of Monkis. Each summer, though, you... Stayed with the Queen of the Royal went hunting with your father's brother Hugo, or visited your mother's Conborn family. No, or visited the Conborn family of the Zeal Harbour, why not? Your grandparents were fisher people of modest means, and staying with them helped you feel grounded. Every autumn, you turn, returned home a little wiser. When Queen Liza died, the whole country grieved, but the mourning could only last for so long. There was a new king to crown. You remember two things about King Valera's coronation. The whispers that Hugo, now the Duke of Val Valenquiris, was actually the rightful king, I believe our, uh, our uncle, yes, Hugo, and the shouts of protesters outside of the palace gates. Alone with your father after the ceremony, you... Ask him about the protests. It's not asking about the rumours. Ask him about the protests. Your father laughed and told you that some people began to believe Rizia shouldn't be ruled by a monarch anymore. But of course, he assured you they were wrong. Uh, we'll believe him. We'll try to keep good faith with our father. Life in Porto Drazen was less exciting than you expected. You were treated privately and rarely had contact with non-royals. At the palace, the closest person to you was Pebble, the groundskeeper's son. A quiet but friendly kid who knew about every plant in the palace gardens. You... Created became close friends. Let's definitely not... Um, become... Enemies of the guy who is good with plants, as that's all of a sudden going to come back to assassinate us later down the line, I would think. So, when you came of age, your father invited you to start sitting on the World Council meetings, and you decided that you'd love to join. I think we'll take an interest in politics. The council members took you under their wing, catching you up on the issues of the day. One of the main concerns was Pala, as a former part of Rizia, the long belonged to the Empire of Valgos. Now the Empire had fallen, war councillor General Tedius Azaro was launching a military campaign to take back the newly independent region back. You 
didn't have an opinion either way. But that's for me to decide. We're going to sit on the fence. As you continue to serve on the council, the campaign in Palace dragged on. It seemed like an easy victory until your northern neighbour, Lesbian, got involved, sending weapons and financial aid. Protests against the war spattered up around the country, and. You asked your father to stop the bloodshed. We will try to be benevolent. We will try to be a benevolent monarch. But I think we're also going to be a pro monarchist benevolent monarch, so. We'll be benevolent, but the monarchy must survive, even though I just kind of selected the wrong one. But that was more just about bloodshed, more than monarchy, to be honest. Some troops were withdrawn, but the fire had been lit. Your next council meeting was interrupted by the announcement that the Navy had mutinied. Bloody clashes between pro and anti monarchists were erupting across the country. The head of the palace security insisted you be driven to a safe house outside of Port of Dresden. As you left city limits, though, an unmarked car swerved in front of you, blocking the road. A trio of unmasked men with guns jumped out, quickly overpowered your guards, and forced you out of the vehicle. Comply with their demands, we're not going to get ourselves shot. You recognise one of their voices Lucas Sazon, Duke of Prennus, and the heads of Rizia's third royal household. A hood went over your head, and then, darkness. They held you captive for nearly a week. When Risky finally came, it was in the form of a man with a white, blue, and magenta flag on his fatigues. Wayland's flag. At the palace, he pieced together what had happened. In desperation, your father had pleaded for the aid of a neighbouring country, Wayland, to neutralise the uprising. But their help came at a price. An agreement signed by both countries transferred ownership of Port de Zeal, surrounding the region to Wayland for the next 40, 45 years? No, 25 years. You, we're just happy to be alive. The uprising also had other consequences. The, tra uh, the traitor Lucas Sazon was executed and his pregnant wife sent into exile. As further punishment, Ezo, the capital of Brennus and the Sazon's ancestral home, was handed over to your family. Your uncle Hugo was sent to serve as its steward, and you were taken to take his place as Reign Duke of Alan Quirus. At your child home in Monkeys, you did your best to help a region rebuild. Van Curious came to see you as a generous, capable leader. One day the king came to you unannounced with, for a visit. He brought with him a pale skinned young woman with striking blue eyes. Hesitantly, she introduced herself as Lena Livingston, the sister of Queen Beatrice of Rumberg. Ooh Queen Beatrice, we had some scraps with you the last time. But let's see if we can We're playing as different people now, so we've bowed. King Valera told that you had no choice. With Wayland descended civil war, Rizia needed a new ally. A partnership with the Kingdom of Rumberg, cemented with an arranged marriage, was in the best interest of both monarchies. Besides headed, you would surely go to love her. Sure. You and Lena began having hours long conversations about your royal upbringings, hopes, and dreams. By the time you lifted her veil, you knew it was true love. The years after your wedding and the birth of your daughter Vina were the happiest of your life. The only trouble was <laughs> you can have yourself stop yourself from having an occasional affair. That being a husband and father shut you from your royal obligations, that your royal obligations sometimes got in the way of you being a good husband and father. That's probably the right one to go with. With Rumberg's help, Rizia's economy bounced back to the levels it hasn't seen since the glory days of Queen Liza. Is there Liza? Wealthy Rumbergians started moving to the cities, and so did economic migrants from neighbouring Morella and Derdia. And Vesix, seeking asylum from the Civil War. Hmm. We welcome the new arrivals, but we're simply glad that that seems a bit covert. We'll just we'll celebrate the new diversity. Many of the foreigners ended up in the province of the Prenas, where a nationalist movement called Su Amina began demanding the king put Rizzi above all. As you can visit, your uncle Hugo turned a blind eye to Su Amino's activities. While his teenage son Ricardus became a vocal supporter. Eventually, Ricardus, better known as Rico, approached you about speaking at one of the group's rallies. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna refuse. You distanced yourself from the organization and Rico. Your uncle was displeased but said nothing. You suddenly realized the upri upri uprising had broken something in your father. He began neglecting his duties, as he became increasingly preoccupied with threats, both real and imaginary. 
Outside of the country, he gained a new nickname, Valero the Frail. He found himself more and more pressure to make up for your father's shortcomings. Lena was patient and understanding, one of the things he loved about her. For her tenth birthday, Vina asked to go sailing on a trip with the two of you, and of course, you are happy they came along. Oh dear. In the middle of the Gulf of Alancurius, the weather turned unexpectedly stormy. When the captain tried to turn the boat around, it was hit by a breaking wave and cracked in half. The coast guard got to you and your daughter in time, but by the time they pulled Lena out, she was barely breathing. They rushed her to the hospital. She died holding your hand. You were devastated. After the funeral, your mother Estella came to visit and you found yourself hardly able to function. She probably moved in to help out with Vienna. Hugo suggested you turn to uh, the, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that religion, um, to cope with your loss. Ooh. We can be a faith person, that's fine. Meanwhile, the situation in the capital worsened. Rizia nationalists continued to protest the loss of Zeal and the country's increasing diversity. Rumours spread that an anti monarchist uh, movement was beginning to grow once more. Your father called Hugo back to the capital to keep an eye on his council. You wonder what the country was coming to. Outsiders also took notice of the king's decline. One of them was Alex Reinhardt, the new ruler of the Grand Duchy of Palace. He sent you on an invitation to come visit him on two occasions. You would go alone and without your father's knowledge. We'll accept. It was your first time in Palace since childhood. You were surprised at how modern everything seemed now. Duke Reinhardt welcomed you to his palace and he said he was hoping to establish real relations with Rizia once you became king. Uh, we agreed that a thaw between Rizia and Palace could be lucrative on both sides. The Duke was satisfied with your answer, he spent the next few days getting to know him and the Duchy better. Afterwards, we told our father. I'm not sure, not sure how that's going to um, go. Oh, that went badly wrong. The king was furious. He accused you of betrayal. He ordered you to tell him about the meeting with the duke. Oh. Keep our mouth shut. As Vina grew into an intelligent, self-reliant young woman, your mother moved back to the capital. She called you one night, her voice shaking. The king was dying. He'd gone straight to bed after dinner. When your mother went to check on him later, she found him comatose in the bedroom. The doctor suspected a heart attack, and we rushed to see him. He's still our father, regardless of what we think of him. Your father looked as pale as a ghost. It took all his effort to speak. In a hoarse whisper, he warned you not to follow in his footsteps. Your reign would be a fresh start for House Taurus, and you chance to take back the lands that were lost. But only after his funeral gathered the palace with your mother and daughter, did the realisation begin to dawn on you. From the day that you were born, your entire life had begun leading to this moment, and now it was finally here. Ascension to the Throne Chapter 1 King Romus I think there are about four chapters in the original game. Now, what do we want to look like? So we are... The political party is the Rizian National Coalition, that's fine. Ooh, I like the hat. The swordish fedora. But we're not from Swordland, so I don't think we'll do that. Oh, look at that! Some excellent... Um, oh yes, I like the... I like the naval hat. Yeah, we're gonna go for the uh, the bike on the big horn. Facial hair. Oh, look at that mustache. Circle. Is anything gonna come close to that mustache? I quite like that one, but I actually think no beard is better. Oh yeah, we're we're go we're going full on like General Melchin mustache. Uh, Taurus royal attire, ceremonial, grey suit, brown suit, white tuxedo, white robe, red velvet. We'll stick with the default. 
And we'll stick with the library as well. I like accessories, glasses, cigar, more glasses, a pipe. I like the pipe. <laughs> we'll go with that. So I'm happy with my customization choices. So here we go. Strategic focus selection panel. As king, you have extensive power to enact and shape the course of your nation. By choosing different focus options, you can improve the strategic direction of your country. So, government structure intention. Opting for absolutism or abs absolutism, it's close, would as solidify mon monarchic traditions, concentrated power and authority within House Taurus. Alternatively, considering reform alliance with the House uh, Saison and the Resilience People Party, indicating a potential shift towards the wider civic participation, perhaps a nuanced resource distribution. Conversely, adherence to the status quo seeks to uphold the prevailing balance of power and some provincial autonomy. We did say we would try to keep the monarchy alive. So, okay, up here we've got authority of plus five, budget plus three, energy plus two. A lot more economy there, a lot more <laughs> stuff than last time. We'll go with the status quo. Uh, as king, you have accepted, okay, that's the same. Uh, economic strategy and focus on strengthening our resource economy emphasizes leveraging our natural assets, safeguarding our long term energy commitments. Alternatively, efforts to diversify the economy away from sole resource reliance aim for a more balanced financial landscape, potentially mitigating risks associated with over reliance. Economic strategy, on the other hand, will give more flexibility. We don't seem to be getting much energy at the moment, so I'll, I'll strengthen resources. Now, foreign affairs. In the face of global tensions, Rosia stands at a strategic nexus. Interventionism uh, champions a proactive military stance. Appeasement fosters diplomacy with Berlin and courts the monarchy of Rumberg. Opting for the third wave veers towards regional alliances, notably with Dirdia, Palace, and Morella, sidestepping dominant powers. Hmm. These are all big decisions that we have to make. I think we're going to go for region alliances. So, Dirdia, Palace, Morella. Now, military bonds focus. A shift in focus to the Risen Air Force. Uh, can position us for any potential area superiority needed. By exploring advanced pilot training and considering an expansion of our bomber fleet, we might enhance our capacities for precision strikes. Extend our bombing operational reach, aiming for advanced control in our airspace. Of the army, but that's plus minus two budget down. Can pave the way for enhanced ground operations, potentially shooting advanced armed vehicles, artillery, and modern infantry equipment. Or the navy. Can score on maritime aspirations by evaluating the integration of advanced warships designed for naval bombardment and amphibious landing capabilities. If we set the stage for a strengthened naval presence and a broader influence in the international waters. Or we can save some money. We'll go for the Air Force in World War II. The Air Force, the RAF keeping out Germany kept the operation to invade the British Isles from not happening. Other ones, many other things. So I think the Air Force is a good strategic choice. I'm sure about my decisions. I'm sure they won't come back to bite me in the slightest. The angelic sounding voices of a boy's choir echo through the great hall of Palace Resna. To many Rizians, this was the grandest room in the grandest building in the entire country. To me, though, it was just home. I remember wandering between the mosaic tiled columns as a bored teenager, goofing off with Pabble in the upper gallery as my father met with fog and foreign dignitaries. And of course, this was where I'd married Lena. I leaned forward in the Scylla Orica the gold-plated wooden throne on which all of the monarchs of Rizia were coronated. The hall before me was filled with nobles, politicians, business magnates, even movie stars. A television crew moved up and down the aisles, broadcasting the ceremony to the Rizian public for the first time. My mother was sitting in the front row next to Uncle Hugo. Tradition dictated that in the absence of a king or queen, consort, the seat next to me would be filled by the successor to the throne. Vina plucked a stray thread in her gown. How are you feeling, father? Ready for the next chapter. My daughter smiled. Me too. I wish mother was the one here sitting here though. The final notes of the coronation hymn by his sword I live rang out. An expectant silence filled the hall. It was broken by the sound of shuffling footsteps 
got to speak. The camera f followed Grand Wiseman's cell as he walked slowly down the central aisle, bearing a velvet cushion. He presented it in front of me. On it was the Taurus crown, a black, black onyx orb, and a scroll containing the words of the royal oath. Hmm. We will take the orb. I lifted the orb off the cushion and ran my fingers across its smooth surface. It was innate with a trio of diamonds, representing the three royal houses of Rizia, Taurus, Zara, and Sazon. We'll look at the crown, forged when my family took the throne 150 years ago. It was made of pure gold, adorning with two twisting spires resembling bullhorns. Now we'll look at Estella. I caught my mother's eye and she gave me a conspiratorial wink. So recite the oath. I did the scroll of the cushion and read aloud from it. I hereby pledge myself to the, in service to the great nation of Rizia and its people. I promise to guide my country with a steadfast hand. To uphold the laws of this land under St. Rurik's watchful eye. To wield the sword of justice and the shield of mercy in equal measure. All this I shall do until the day I die. May St. Wirrick fill you with the Holy Spirit. I think that's how I would say it, St. Wirrick. May he fill you with his Holy Spirit on this day, as he did with his ancestors before you. With trembling hands, Grand Wiseman lifted the crown off the cushions. I could spot a grey hair still clinging to its inner rim. My father's. May you keep the promises you have made before God and your people. The crown came down on my head. Its heaviness surprised me. By the divine power vested in me, I proclaim you sovereign king of Rizia. Arise, King Romus. I stood, and the choir broke into On the Shores of Gold, the Rizia National Anthem. I proceed with coronation. I don't want to I don't want to break I don't want to do a speech, no. Everyone in the crowd bowed their heads as Vina and I made our way down the aisle. I've asked my cousin Rico in the second row. He kept his head down and didn't acknowledge me. As we kept walking, I recognised various other members of the Rizia's three royal houses, as well as monks from other distant kingdoms. The entire back row was reserved for the Rumbergian royal family and their entourage. I feel my sister-in-law bitches his eyes on me. We re as we reached the end of the hall, a spiral staircase led to the palace balcony. Come, Vina, let's, get your, let's greet your future subjects. My daughter beamed and put her arm through mine. We walked up the stairs until we came to a door. And then we stepped out onto the balcony, and the sunlight was so dazzling I was almost blinded. When my eyes adjusted, I regarded the scene below me. Thousands and thousands of people were packed onto the palace grounds, some waving the museum flag, other the house tourist banner. Just beyond them, at the gates, the police easily held back a small pocket of protesters. I paid the little attention. I was focused on the noise of the crowd, an overwhelming roar that gradually cohered into a single chant. Salutinas axalego novus. Which I'm guessing is like fake Latin, or possibly even real Latin. All hail the new king. That's a lot of situation updates. So, if you've not played Cicero before, you are the leader of a political party. Or, in this case, a country, because you are a monarch. And you have to run the country. And you have certain benefits, or lack thereof. You have certain economy benefits, such as energy, budget. These could, of course, all change. It's actually nice that we get to see why these are now occurring. I'm just going to have to get rid of all those, because they're getting in the way. Um, it's nice to actually see why... We're actually losing or gaining, because that, that's very useful to see. Let's just have a quick look at our situations and our policies. So military, we have a lot of kind of yellow ones, kind of average. We have a pretty small fleet in terms of maritime operations and heavy reliance on foreign equipment. But we do have a good mountaineering corps, and we have monarchist fighting heritage. In terms of laws, we have no separations of power, media is censored, unfair treatment to foreigners and weak human rights. Women's rights are okay, but we do uphold our old traditions. I have to remember this is not a democracy. We are in a monarchy. I have to play slightly differently. In terms of the economy, we have low extraction volume in one of our oil fields, a rigid energy economy, low production capacity and low 
it's not really a great tourist destination. But we have high quality football teams, <laughs> good transportation, that's always useful, and a high resource output in the international trade zone. Welfare, horrible workers' rights, I'm sure we can change that. Although we do have a strong welfare state, which is good. Order, some good, some bad. Okay. We will have to see what we can do from now. I'm guessing we have to go meet our cabinet. First of all, though, we need to decide our celebrations. The reason public is eager to celebrate their new king's coronation. Investing in live celebrations can make a good first impression and earn their favour. Now, last time I played, I got myself into horrible debt, and I don't want to do so again. We will invest one. Hopefully to make a good impression, one way or another. So, early morning at the palace. The morning after my coronation, I was woken up by a knock on the door. It took me a few reckons, reckons, a few seconds to remember where I was. The royal bedroom on the top floor of the residential wing of the palace made uh, the one into the tourist palace in one zip look like look pretty shabby. I cannot speak today. I apologise. <laughs> one eight gold trim covered the walls. I was alone in a bed that easily could have slept for. The knocking on the door continued. Who is it? Papa walked in beaming. After I left the monkeys, my friend had worked his way up to chief butler. It's hard to believe he is now the head of my royal household. Rise and shine, your majesty. <laughs> what nerve. Um, good to see you, Pavel. You too. He drew back the heavy velvet curtains and sunshine flooded the room. Romus, king of Rizia, you've come a long way since we were kids. So have you, Mr. Chief Butler? Absolutely. He's come on leaps and bounds as well since we uh, were little kids. Not bad for the groundskeeper's son, of course. It helped to have friends in high places. He looked me in the eyes. Forgive me if I'm overstepping, but how are you doing? I know you and your father didn't get along by the end. But it's never easy to lose a parent. It's complicated. I don't know what I should be feeling right now. There's no should. You feel what you feel. He opened the doors of my armoire and began putting out items of clothing. You have quite the packed schedule this morning. Why don't you eat breakfast with the girls while I get your outfit ready? Won't you eat with us? Pavel shook his head. I eat in the servants' quarters for all coming here. Their hierarchy is to be reserved now that you're king, I'm afraid. Can you just call me, stop calling me your majesty? We don't need to be so formal with each other. I can in private... In public, it would be seen as highly disrespectful. That is very true. Thank you, Pavel. I haven't forgotten, though. Bimaro volu on oxitsulu. I recognise the slogan we made up as kids. Two tides rise, one sun sets. Thanks, Pavel. Let's catch up later. Enjoy your breakfast. See my desk again, I headed downstairs. In the eastern dining room, an enormous breakfast spread had been laid out. My mother was already sitting at the table digging a spoon into a single grapefruit half. Good morning, Mother. Same to you, darling. Despite the early hour, my mother was already in her full makeup. She dabbed at her lips with a napkin. I hope you're satisfied with yesterday's coronation. Your father's wasn't nearly as well attended. Um, no, those are great options. We're going to say my people love me. You seem to Love being seen on television. You, they're not so sure about. Her eyes grew serious. What did he say to you before he died, by the way? I never asked. He said not to make the same mistakes that he did. He must have been talking about Zilla and Pallas, his greatest follies. It's a pity he didn't learn to preside, didn't live to preside over my homeland's big return to Rizia, but soon you will. Alatia, if it is said, so it is, so it will be. She looked sceptical for a second, then assumed a reverent position. Alatia, indeed. But don't let my natural keep you from eating. A king needs energy. She, had me, she handed me a rosetta, the traditional rice and quince custard tart, 
Cross was exceptionally flaky. Just then, Vina came bounding downstairs. How was Vina supposed to be? This is none of our private life. Okay. Isn't it a lovely morning? My daughter kissed mother on the cheek and then gave me a shy wave. I only got lost in the wave here. Grandma, why didn't you tell me this place has such a big library? Eat now, darling. She eagerly took a, place, a plate and started piling high with pastries. My mother clicked her tongue disapprovingly. Not too many of those. The sweeter the taste, the wider the weights. Don't you agree, Romus? It's a special occasion. Our diets can start tomorrow. Vina took a bite of a rosette and gave an exaggerated sigh of pleasure. My mother rolled her eyes. Suit yourself. Now, if anyone in this place can make half a decent strudel, that would be worth ruining one's thing for. Agreed. I bloody love strudel. We ate for a while in silence, and Vina had lost in thought, and finally she spoke up. Father, I wanted to ask you something. You know, she, she looks a bit older than 18 in her portrait. I must be honest. I thought she might have been mid-twenties. Yes. Um, yes, and? I was thinking I'm old enough to accompany you to council meetings. It's unusual for a female to join the council, I know. But didn't you do the same when you were my age? 18-year-old no, is enough to get involved in world politics. And Liza the Great is a huge legacy for me to keep up with. Greatness is something you're born is something you're born with, my daughter can't clean off others. Um you shouldn't have to worry about living up to anyone's legacy, you're great in your own right. That's very kind of you, father, but Liza was the most beloved queen in our history. Of course people will compare me to her. You're getting ahead of yourself, sweetheart. The crown is on your father's head right now, not yours. Shut it to me sharply. And what your father needs is for your lovely little face to be seen at balls and ribbon cutting ceremonies, not hidden behind council doors. That's an outdated image of a princess, isn't it? If Vina wants to get involved in politics, I don't see why I shouldn't let her. It would mean the world to me, father. You want to spend the best years of her life cooped up in the den of snakes? The council isn't some wise or knowing entity. Everyone on it is only looking after their own house and their own stature. And God help you if you get in the way of either of those. My father may have allowed his council to run roughshod over him. I will not make the same mistake. Even though I almost certainly will. If navigating the council self interest will be part of my future duties, I need to learn how to do that too. Very true, Vina. Very true indeed. I promise it will be like I'm not even there, and I'll step out in public as much as I can. Vina looked at me with pleading eyes. You can come to the meetings, Vina. My daughter's face lifted up, lit up. Keep her in good company. Don't let her get overwhelmed. I'd better refresh myself from Rizzi and Law. She pushed the plate away and dashed up the stairs. Once she was gone, my mother lit a cigarette. You do realise there should be nothing but a liability to you in that room. She's the heir apparent. It'll be a good education for her. I hope you're right. The clock struck quarter to nine and my first council meeting was starting soon. I excused myself from the table. As I was leaving the dining room, my mother cleared her throat. He always believed he'd make a good king, you know, even if he didn't always show it. <laughs> Bullshit. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> I had to back upstairs to fetch Fina. It was almost time to go. Well, well, well. That is a very interesting start. We'll read this report. House of Delegates holds first allegiance ceremony. For the occasion of the first Rizian coronation since the founding of House of the Delegates, Majority Leader Dario de Riva called a special session where members took an oath of allegiance to the Crown. Each parliamentarian was asked to stand and affirm his or her commitment to serve under King Romus's reign for dedication and integrity. Then we have to go do a political overview with the Grand Rizia, but we will do that next time. As first of all, my voice still needs a little bit of time to recover post-flu. 
and I suspect that meeting the council and making some big political decisions of the day might take a while. So, thank you so much for joining me. This is your new series alongside Stronghold, alongside Stronghold Definitive Edition. And it's good to be back in with Scissor Ren. It's such a f- I love political simulators. I love political games. Let's try not to end up in a nuclear pop- apocalypse like last time. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.